Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be working on the F-350. I have been needing to balance the drive shaft over 75 miles an hour. It's this weird vibration. So I'm gonna pull it, have a new carrier bearing, U-joints, and have it balanced. So I'm gonna pull the truck up right now and uh, pull it off. I'll probably end up using my grandma's Lexus to take it over to the place because the 3000 GT, I need to make that license plate bracket. The F-350 is still looking fresh. Need to get under here and pull the drive shaft. So I'm gonna pull the drive shaft out of this thing and uh, pretty much all it takes is some 12.10s. I'm pretty sure those are 13s up there. And then uh, right here is kind of the issue with it. This carrier bearing was kind of messed up from the accident and uh, the drive shaft most likely needs to be balanced. So just replace all that, have it done. I think it's like 200 bucks, which isn't bad. And uh, then I won't have to worry about ripping this thing really hard. Just finished pulling the drive shaft out of the F-350. Since I can't drive it, I'm gonna drive my grandma's Lexus. I just put a battery in here because the headlights have been malfunctioning. I think it's because of the security system, but uh, I'm gonna load it in here and head over to the drive shaft balancing place. Sit over here at Pueblo Brake and Clutch to get my drive shaft balanced. And, uh, oh, it actually locked. Let's uh, give her the unlock. So what they're gonna do is throw a new carrier bearing in and give the drive shaft a balance. I, uh, I may tell them to do the U-joints. This one kind of looks a little rusty and uh, I don't wanna have to do this process in a few months from now. So gonna go carry this in and uh, he said it should be done by tomorrow. So we're good to go. The drive shaft's in their hands. Should have it back tomorrow. Just picked up the drive shaft for the F-350 and the one day it was gonna take to have it done turned into a whole week. So now I have it back. It has new U-joints, new carrier bearing, and is freshly balanced. And it was out of balance, so now I shouldn't have any issues with taking the truck and actually going over 80 miles an hour and ripping it. So you can see right here, they did balance it on both sides, did new weights and uh, new U-joints, and there's a new carrier bearing right here. And uh, it was only supposed to cost like 190 bucks, but then uh, you know, the price got increased. It was like almost 400 bucks to have this thing done, but now it's done so I could really get on the truck and not have to worry about it doing anything weird because the drive shaft was kind of vibrating. Drive shaft is back in the truck and now I'm going to go take it for a test drive, make sure that the vibrations are gone. With the drive shaft balance, I could actually do full rips with the truck. So that is one thing to check off the uh, checklist for the truck. I really need to do something about these wheels or if I don't do anything about these wheels, I need to fix the TPS sensors and uh, this one inner tire is different. It's kind of been bothering me. It really doesn't matter, but um, I need to do something with that. So that's a decision right there. And uh, other than that, the, uh, you know, the drive shaft was the, the, the major thing. I was kind of afraid to do full rips over like 80 miles an hour, even cruising at 80 miles an hour when I was towing Adam's car up to the drift event. It was, uh, you know, kind of kind of sketchy. So now I'm really happy that that's fixed. Came over to the junkyard. I need this little motor right here. I had to pull mine apart because I needed to figure out how it worked. Because I'm pretty sure I have to reverse the wires in it. So it works from right-hand drive to left-hand drive. Got that little blend door motor off the 240 HVAC system. Now I'm going to go grab some lunch. Now I'm working on the S13 digital climate control. That's what I got that motor from the junkyard for. And I am in the basement, it's a little bit dark and a little bit echoey, but the uh, the thing with the digital climate control is it comes out of right-hand drive car. The motor for the blend door is uh, on the driver's side, which is the passenger side on a left-hand drive car. So the issue with that is, is everything is reversed. So throughout history, everybody has looked at that Nico write-up, how to install a S13 digital climate control. And I also looked at it, this was pretty much a plug and play thing. My harness wasn't cut up and I have everything. I can't get the blower motor to work for some reason, but I'll work on it next. And uh, the thing is, is it works. So it does technically work. You can plug everything in, it, it functions. It doesn't function 100% as it's supposed to, but it does function. So the issue with the S13 from Japan is it's right-hand drive. So this motor that's right here is actually on this other side. Both motors operate the same way. 
So they're operating counterclockwise most of the time. And the issue with that is, is when you do plug it into this, all the functions are reversed. So they don't technically work. So when you press, you know, if you want the, the climate control to give you, you know, nice fresh air to your face or to like your feet and your face or just your feet or the defrost in your feet or uh, the defrost in general, it's all backwards. So when you press defrost, it's actually blowing air on your face and uh, you know, it's just reversed. So now you can see it's on defrost right here and I'm gonna press to the, uh, the face, closes the defrost vent as it should and uh, it does do that throughout the rest of the things. They work exactly as they should. It did take a few trial and error attempts, but I did have the, the bulk of the idea down. I just didn't know how these worked from the inside out. Um, there's no real diagram on how these are, but I did make one. So here is all the wire colors right there coming into it. And uh, this is the motor that is right here. So it branches off. This is, you know, this green is a power. It gets its ground from this black over here and, uh, and so on. All these, I believe, are just signal powers that are grounding to tell it when, telling the climate control that it is in the correct position to turn the motor off uh, because it is supplying power from the climate control for the motor. And uh, I had the idea there and uh, I just had to go through the steps. So what I did first was I was like, well, if I just switch all these wires and reverse them, I shouldn't have an issue and it should function correctly. So I tried that first. The, uh, the, uh, the motor actually goes out of its range. So once it goes out of its range, it has no contact. It doesn't know where it's at. It doesn't reposition itself. So then the motor just doesn't work. And uh, you have to actually come back here and uh, where's it at? Right there, those two pins right there. And you have to actually manually power the motor back around into position. So it works. So I was like, oh no, it's, it's not working. I, I need to figure something out. And uh, then I looked at the motor. I thought, uh, well, if the motor is spinning most of the time counterclockwise, I need it to spin most of the time clockwise. So what I did was I ended up unsoldering the motor and reversing the polarity so the motor spins the opposite direction. And after I did that, I plugged it in and now I do have a functioning you know, HVAC system that works as it should. I have defrost when I need defrost. I have, you know, air blown on my face when I want air blown on my face. Eventually, once I get this stuff in the car, uh, you can see I have some, some crazy stuff going on. But that's exactly how you do it. These wire colors aren't correct in, uh, in terms of how it should be wired. So all these wire colors are just reversed. So these two switch, these two switch, those two switch, and, uh, then the motor, obviously, you reverse the polarity on it. And then you have this unit that functions correctly as it should. So hopefully this helps some people out. I'd, I don't know if it will because I don't think a lot of people like S13s anymore. As much as I do, I don't, I don't actually know why I like S13 so much, but I do. And uh, this wiring harness is actually getting pretty close to done now that I have that situated. The blower motor, I'm not exactly sure what is going on with it, but I'm gonna mess with it a little bit. Now that I have the test one over there on the HVAC assembly, I have the normal one that I'm gonna use forever right here. The test one over there, I just pretty much just chopped the uh, leads right here and uh, soldered them reverse without actually pulling the motor out. And this one, I desoldered the motor and I'm gonna rotate it on this and then resolder it and it will be 100% like it was, and I won't have to worry about those little ends cracking over time because they are metal, and uh, I just don't wanna have to deal with that. So, and this, this motor assembly right here looks a lot cleaner than the one I used from the junkyard. The one from the junkyard had a bunch of dirt and stuff in it, but it did do the job. So now I'll solder that motor back in, the uh, reverse polarity, and I should be good to go with uh, 
with this and now after that I'm going to get the blower motor in the uh, recirc motor working correctly and after that's done I can throw all this stuff back into the car. Right there's the nice new solder joints. Now I can close this thing up and it's good to go. So now here is the permanent non-hacked up motor and uh, it works just the same just a little bit better because I didn't pull the little arm off. On this one I did pull the arm so it didn't have the uh, it was a little bit tight and this one's a lot better so Look at that. And which setting are we on? Blow on your face setting. Banging out the final wiring harness for the coupe. And I figured out what my issue was with the headlight on the passenger side randomly being on when the brake light was applied. I, I figured I accidentally spliced something in, but I had to figure it out. So what the issue is, is on the plug that goes to the headlight switch, there is a red green right there and uh, the wire that goes to the brake lights, it's a red green. So right here, right here, I, uh, I accidentally connected them. So I just need to unconnect them and I should be good to go. Getting close to being finished with the S13 wiring harness and it has always amazed me how much redundant wiring is in factory wiring harnesses. So this big pile right here in the center of the floor is all the extra wire. Um, after tucking an S13 wiring harness, that's what you're left with. And this harness is still gonna have factory AC, factory power windows, power mirrors, um, you know, digital climate control, more than came, like S13s came with, but I still have this big pile. It's just because the wiring harness is tucked now. And uh, so this is the back of the harness and uh, that is the front of the harness for the headlights and everything and uh, the stereo. I could have just used this stereo harness, but it was cut. So I decided not to. So this is uh, gonna get wrapped up pretty quick. And uh, now I should just have to, I'm gonna pull this harness. Well, I'm gonna get rid of that pile right there. I'm gonna pretty much pull this harness up there and then just run everything, you know, disconnect everything. So that should go pretty quick. And this harness should be done. I won't put any wrapping or sheathing around it just because I wanna make sure that it's going to function. Um, the only reason I did end up doing this harness over was because I had that weird brake light issue and I did find that pretty quick, but I just ended up deciding that I wanted to not have to deal with um, not having a factory fuse box, which I was going to use my Busman fuse box over here. It's right there, but I couldn't find anywhere good to fit it and I didn't want to have to run a bunch of additional wires to the back of the car which i really didn't need so i'm gonna make this factory one work and uh, the factory relays and everything work i took out the headlight timer like i always do uh, because this doesn't have pop-ups so sylvia front i hate pop-ups if uh you guys are new to my channel and don't know all my cars that had pop-ups they don't because i hate them i i just cannot stand pop-ups so the fd over there it uh had pop-ups that had pop-ups. Um, this didn't have pop-ups, but I, I did update the lights because the, the ones that were on it were gross. So these are 99 lights. But uh, if I got an NSX, I would put fixed fixed lights in it and uh, and so on. So if you don't like it, I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's my taste. I, I hate pop-ups and uh, I hate additional wiring that I don't need. But I do love nice clean tucked engine bay harnesses where you can't see anything wiring related. You can see the two harnesses are now pretty much one and uh, I have the pile of wire over there that's getting a lot larger. The, uh, the thing about the digital climate control with the blower motor always being on um, the highest of the low speeds, the, uh, the high speed relay works and kicks on but I can't really figure out the uh, stock US harness has this relay right here and uh, this green wire that I do connect into the uh, digital climate control. It, uh, it pretty much triggers this relay to be on, but I still don't understand how that makes the fan, you know, why it's not correctly working. I looked up the S13 digital climate control manual and right here, everything is just grounded. You can see right there, it's just grounded over here. This is the uh, 
the blower motor resistor, it's just grounded. And uh, also right here, this is the high speed relay and that's just grounded as well. So all this stuff is just, just grounded. So I don't see why, um, because the, the factory harness that I pulled out of that Sylvia clip had everything just grounded. And that's how I put it in the US harness that I'm making now. I just don't understand why the uh, blower motor is always on the highest of the lowest speed. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably this uh, right here, this blower motor resist. Pulled the hood and fenders just so it was a little bit easier to access all the wiring for the headlights since I do have them running on each side of the frame rails. And uh, then I could put the starter wire through in that wiring. I am gonna throw the dash support in the HVAC system in so I could make sure all the lengths of wires are in the correct positions. And uh, this harness is getting there. Uh, the reason I'm throwing it in like this is just so I can get everything the correct length. Got a bunch of zip ties holding the wiring harness together. Have it laid out how it needs to go. Now I'm gonna pull the harness out of the car again, solder everything, short wires, extend wires, just make sure everything is nice and tidy. All right, so you guys are probably thinking that the wiring harness is all the way done but it is not. I have actually made quite a bit of progress. Um, those who have done wiring harnesses before, they know, they're, they're kind of a pain. Uh, you can really just throw them together and they'll work. I mean, I could have just bundled all this up, but to get all the wires nice and tidy so they're not just like a pile of wires that look like this, um, I mean, that looks so much better. And that's not even, it doesn't have any sheathing or anything on it. So I'm uh, to the heater control and the uh, audio stuff right there. That's all connected. Second test fit of the wiring harness in the 240 and everything is going extremely well. The, uh, the stuff I already have done is nice and tidy and uh, everything fits exactly as it should. Um, I probably need to zip tie that right there. But other than that, um, over here, the uh, fog light and the defrost are good lengths, but the uh, ignition, I need to extend that as well as, actually the ignition doesn't need to be extended. The uh, wiper and the, the headlight switch needs to be extended. All right, so just leaving Walmart, I got some more solder, I ran out, and uh, I got some water because the water out of the faucet started taking, tasting like salt water. So finally, I could say the wiring harness is done up to the fuse box, and that's really what all of this bunched up stuff is. Once I do the fuse box, all this will go away. The uh, back harness was um, stock. I don't have to modify that at all. Just test fit the wiring harness for the dash, and uh, everything fits very nice. The uh, wires down here that were too short before, I extended them and uh, now they are loose. You don't want stuff to be too tight. You want it to have a little slack in it. All these have slack. Kind of organized the S13 factory fuse box that's inside the car. I made it so the factory power folding and power mirrors plug in, the fog lights are plugged in, and the headlights are actually plugged into this. Usually the headlights and the fog lights are ran into the engine bay. So this thing is completely full. Usually these things have a lot of extra spots open on them, but this one is double stuffed. So um, now all I really have to do is mess with this power distribution wiring and the relays because I'm gonna you know, consolidate some of these. And uh, after that's done, then uh, I can pretty much wrap this harness up and uh, put it back in the car and call it a day, which is gonna be awesome. All right guys, so pretty much at a stopping point, the wiring harness is close to being finished. I just need some more blue-black wire to extend the power folding mirror harness. Once that's done, I could re, you know, wrap all this wiring, throw it in the car, test it. I'm, I'm pretty sure, almost 95% sure that everything's gonna work as it's supposed to. The fuse box right there is all sorted and I'm really excited that this thing is in the state it is. Also the pile of wiring that I pretty much took all this out of the harness is just massive. So this is all the wire and stuff I removed and it's just crazy. So I am excited to say that the wiring harness is finally completed. So it was a lot of work, but that work paid off. Now I have a completely tucked S13 harness for my coupe 
And uh, one day I will reproduce this harness to put in my other blue coupe that has the SR20 VVL in it. But what I wanted to do was not have a hack job wiring harness where you pull the fuse boxes back into the interior, stuff them under the dash and just have all the extra wiring. And if you're like, there's not that much extra wiring in a 240 harness, well, this pile of wire right here begs to differ. So I am uh, going to throw this wiring harness back in the car um, and then I'll test it in the next video to make sure everything works. Um, like I said before, I have no doubts that everything is gonna work on this harness. Digital climate control is wired in, the power mirrors and power folding mirrors are correctly wired in, and uh, the wiring harnesses for each individual headlight. Also, one thing I noticed was on the S13 digital climate control, you have to run this sensor. This is an ambient air temp sensor, but um, on the, the threads, they show that you have to run this outside the car. The factory sensor, um, they do have ambient air temp sensors and it is the one on the um, evaporator box. So that sensor on there is an ambient air temp sensor. You don't have to run it outside the car. I did it just because that's how the Sylvia's R ran in Japan. Um, also, one thing the Sylvia's R in Japan is they don't have a condenser fan motor. Um, I may end up taking this extra relay out for the condenser fan. Um, I'm gonna run it without it to see how the AC acts without a condenser fan and just use the engine fan as kind of a condenser fan. It should be all right. I also located the little relay for the, uh, the wiper amp and uh, that is next to the time control circuit. So that is nice and tucked. It's not in the engine bay. And the only thing you're gonna see is a wire over there coming out of the little fender going to the wiper motor. And then all the wiring for the headlights and everything is gonna be hidden. Also the wires for the, um, the uh, pressure switch or the pressure sensor on the, uh, the dryer for the AC system, because I am gonna have AC in this car, is gonna be um, kind of by the headlight kind of tucked in there and I'm gonna make my own lines for this car. But the wiring harness is finished. I'm going to push the S13 out, pressure wash everything and uh, get it ready to put the wiring harness in and start dialing in the engine bay. finished removing all the parts that were stored inside the car and uh, this is all the stuff there's some extra stuff but this is most of the stuff for the interior of the car and the HVAC system what I'm gonna do now is do the shop vac clean all the random stuff that is uh, on the floor zip ties just uh, random wiring stuff and this uh, interior kind of smells like oil I'm not sure if oil absorbed into the sound ending but I'm going to pressure wash it out um, you know, there's nothing in it, so I'll pull the plugs and uh, the water will just drain out. After that, I could uh, pressure wash the outside of the car and then get this thing ready to start putting the interior back in it. The car is now cleaned and back in the garage. I am going to now throw the wiring harness in the car. And uh, as you can see, it doesn't look as dirty in here anymore. I wiped it down with a towel. I did end up throwing the towel away because it was pretty grimy, but it doesn't smell as bad anymore. It just smelled like oil in here, 
which was kind of strange. Just finished buttoning up the front end, put the bumper, the fenders, the headlights, all that stuff back together. And now you can see exactly how much wiring is actually in the engine bay. It is, there, there isn't any. So the, uh, the thing that I wanted was a nice clean look. There obviously will be an engine harness, but I'm gonna run that to a mil spec connector to the normal hole for the, um, you know, the EC wiring. I will also have a little grommet I'm gonna make so it has a wire coming out of it for the starter, which will be really nice to integrate all that together. But other than that, there's this is the wiring. So I'm gonna try to keep all the wiring kind of hidden on the engine. Uh, run as much as I can on an intake manifold. Obviously this is a fast one or two, so it is very tucked in to that lower valley cover. And uh, down here you can see all the, uh, the business end with all the wiring. It's all nice and tidy and everything. I will need to get some new clips and everything. I pulled them out in and out so many times and you can see the wiring for the fog lights and that's the wiring for the ambient air temp sensor or the outside air temp sensor right there. And uh, I actually added some Pathfinder horns just so they're a little bit louder. So I have two of those and uh, they're all wired in as well. That's gonna wrap up today's video with the F350 and the 240SX. They both seem to take the same amount of time. The 240 was a lot more work. The F350, they just didn't get parts in time and it took them a week to do the drive shaft. So this thing, the wiring's done and I'm really excited that it's finally done. I've been procrastinating it forever. So if you guys like the videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and see you guys next time.